Thanks for tuning in to the Medevac Podcast, powered by the Robert Irvine Foundation, whose mission is to support and strengthen the physical and mental well-being of our nation's heroes and their families. I'm one of your hosts, David Reed. And I'm your other host, Christian Myers. Thank you very much for joining us today on the Medevac Podcast. If you are new here, there's a price for the show. You have to share it with a friend or family member if you get something out of today's episode or interact with the content somehow. Leave a review, leave a comment. Thumbs up, thumbs down. One of those things. We'd do the same for you guys. Not a thumbs down, though. We would definitely not do that for <laughs> yeah. you. Don't do it for us. Yeah, please don't. Yeah. It, it hurts my heart. <laughs> Our guests today. We have two wonderful guests today, uh, Sean and Ash Vasquez. Uh, Sean is a former uh, Army 11 Bravo infantryman. Now he does contract security work. And Ash uh, is an international operations manager with Self Esteem Brands. Yes, sir. Awesome. And they own, so they basically own... A multitude of gyms internationally. Uh, a, multi- a multitude of businesses, okay. all in franchising, right? Okay, that yeah. makes sense. And uh, you are also the founder of Until Death Collective. Correct. Which is how we met yeah. through uh, Until Death and Terra Arma. Uh, so we're here to talk to them about uh, what they do today. So thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah thanks absolutely. for coming on. Um, and we just had, uh, it's so great to see you guys so soon after our excellent workout at Alpha Warrior the other day. It's rough. That, it are, rough. You, are you guys feeling it from? Today I am. <laughs> like my back I today, am. yeah, <laughs> a little tight. Yeah, I got I some am. knots like in between my scapula right now. Hey, yeah. Well, you beasted it out, brother. I'll tell you that that uh, that workout was cool. So let's kind of rewind it back a little bit and um, talk about. Uh, first, I'm, I'm very interested to hear how you guys met, but I'm assuming you were in the military first. Yes, I was. And and how did that kind of spin up? What inspired you to join and certainly pick Eleven Bravo? So from a young age, I always knew I wanted to join the military. I know it's kind of one of those things that it's like, oh, why did you want to join the military? I wanted to join to serve the country, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and uh, I originally signed up with a RIP contract, um, ended up quitting as soon as I got there. Uh, in RIP? In RIP, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was what was the, the reasoning behind it? Let's just say that um, I was in hold for like four to six weeks for a long time. I was just tired of it. So as soon as we started, I was like, nope. Mm. I was like, I'll just go to a regular unit and I can start my career. Big mistake. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So they shipped me off to the 82nd and I just realized I was just, you know, stuck doing some of the same things, you know, getting hazed and whatnot. It's or hazed, (laughs) right? (laughs) Big air quotes. Yeah, big air quotes. Um, but yeah, so um, that's why I joined. But uh, I joined the 82nd. I deployed to Afghanistan, mm. um, got back from Afghanistan, and then got orders to Fort Polk, Louisiana, where I was in the 509th. I played Op 4 for three years for the most part okay. and uh, decided it was just time to get out, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the army was heading in a different direction. I just wasn't liking it. Um, what year was this? This was when I decided I was I was done. Yeah, yeah. Probably like uh, 2012, 2013. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're changing theaters and kind of <coughs> dwindling down from... Yeah, dwindling Hearts down. and Minds was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. That time frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you deployed when? Uh, 2009, 2010. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So a spicy time in Afghanistan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went out there and we were supposed to work with ODAs and we did for a little bit and uh, we ended up getting our own task force at a certain point in time, Task Force Fury, and uh, we did a surge through the Argandab River Valley, which is just uh, north of Kandahar, Mm -hmm. and uh, we built our own cop, which I didn't think we were going to do at all in that deployment. You always hear the horror stories of having to do that and so it ended up happening and it was... As soon as fighting season started, it yeah. was just one thing after another, just yeah, constantly. Just go, go, go. Mm-hmm. Big fat target out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. So you ended up deploying and getting back and you're like, this is not for me after they stuck you into three years of Op 4. The Op 4 wasn't the bad part. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually fun at the time until they started shifting from hearts and minds and mm-hmm. So what they started doing, what I noticed when I was in the 509th is they started like really letting the army win. Um, They restricted our freedom a lot as Op 4. Mm -hmm. Um, And guys weren't really, I I felt like they weren't learning from their mistakes that they were making, you Mm -hmm. know, because going 
at the time, I don't know if, have you ever been to Fort Polk? You guys don't go to Fort Polk as, as a been. ranger. I have been. Yeah, so um, the whole idea is to, you know, learn from your mistakes and get rid of the people that aren't really doing their job and put the right people in those places. And I felt like that wasn't really happening. So mm -hmm. even if I would have went to another unit, I think that um, it was just so watered down. I wanted nothing to do with it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Not not taking attrition seriously. Is yeah. that what I mean? Mm -hmm. so There's you know, no guys, accountability. The leadership yeah. was bad. Um, I remember guys just getting promoted just because they had points, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, man, there's no way this guy should have been promoted. Yeah. Mm. There's no way. Um, yeah, that that's an interesting one. And it, it, it's so unfortunate because it's a failure of leadership at that point yeah. to have someone that has those values instilled upon them at a young age go into the military and be so failed in, in direction that you end up getting out because of it. Mm. And you know what? There's a lot of people that I, I know personally that got out for that reason. Yeah. You know, bureaucratic it, red tape. And I, I think, I mean, at this point we've interviewed several people and we see that it could go either direction. Like, and most of the time that characteristic that makes you brilliant in the military is that one mentor, that leader that kind of takes you under their wing and sets you up for success. So you really didn't have that when you were in. No, I had a couple people, uh, my friend, Brian Piercy, he ended up passing while we were deployed. Mm -hmm. Um, he got, uh, blown up by an IED when we were on a, a we were doing BDA. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, during that time, I mean, it was, it was just crazy, but yeah, he got blown up. So, uh, and he really pushed me and, um, like wanted me to like, say for instance, go to selection or mm -hmm. go to RASP because they just changed it from RIP to RASP mm -hmm. at the time, like when I got back, but I seemed to lost a lot of motivation. Then I found out another one of my friends, Bear, he he passed away. Um, he ended up getting shot. Uh, it was like a green on blue mm -hmm. type deal. Yeah. So yeah, he ended up getting smoked due to the whole burning of the Quran at that time when that was a big thing. Yeah. So, um, so you kind of just, did it put a bad taste in your mouth? <laughs> I, I would. Yeah. 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 That's fair. That is fair. Um, understandable. And, um, so you at the time, what, what are you doing during this, this time? <clears throat> what you year is this? You didn't know each other, right? No, no, not at all. And so let's just say 08 to 14. All right. So I was in my early 20s. I was, um, in 2011, I just started working for self-esteem brands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once I started doing that, my career was my life for a really long time. Um, prior to that, I was just having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I was not focused on anything at all. And, um, yeah. And then when I was 25, I started getting my shit together. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, started getting more into fitness and taking business seriously. Yeah, I grew. Or? I mean, I grew up. <clears throat> I grew up in sports and and fitness. So my dad was a DI in the Marines. He retired as a Marine. Okay. Um, and then he became a cop, right? So mm. like a very authoritative guy. Sure. And growing up, he would use fitness as punishment, <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out so well, right? So like, if if we left our shoes by the door or something of that nature, it's like ten push ups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Run a mile, right? Yeah. And he would pace us on his bike. Um, <laughs> he, it's true. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> Very DI of him, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when I was when I was fourteen, my first job ever was in the daycare of a gym, right? My mm -hmm. dad got my. I'm a twin. My dad got my twin and I um, a nanny position in the daycare. And then when I was sixteen, we got moved up to the front desk. Mm -hmm. When I was eighteen, I got my personal training certification. Mm -hmm. And when I was 20, I kind of segued into the ops, okay. right? Operations. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it was pretty much all downhill from there. So I still work in the fitness industry, um, more so franchising now, but, mm -hmm. you know, for all health and wellness brands. And it's a direct result of the path that I took way back when. So, mm -hmm. so my dad really catapulted that for me and you know, has always been one of my biggest cheerleaders. Yeah, the DI. I would I would just say the DI should have probably joined you instead of <laughs> yeah. followed you around on the bike. Yes. My dad was 
Mm -hmm. Uh, God, he's still a legend, right? He could bench 400 pounds and run a 5K in like, I don't know, sub 17 minutes, which I don't know if that's fast for other people, but it's really fast for me. And um, yeah, I just thought, I mean, I still think he was Superman because, you know. So that 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 kind of punishment aspect of things ended up, it, it's it's weird. It could go one of two ways. Yeah. It could either push you away or kind of drive you towards it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think my sister and I are such a fun case study because <laughs> we're identical twins and um, fitness isn't a primary focus in her life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we had, you know, my dad, when I say he was a DI, he was like, he did the best he could, but we had white glove inspection on Sundays where he would come up and, you know, dust the light bulbs, <laughs> take the white glove and go around the floorboards. And if it was dirty, we were grounded to our rooms for a week. No TV, no radio, you know, cell phones didn't exist back then. No pagers. <laughs> um, no pom- so, take your palm pilot away. Yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of, that's when I read all my goosebump books, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I am I'm an immaculate person now. Yeah. And my twin is not. So mm-hmm. it's just really funny how we had the exact same upbringing yeah. and we are two very different people. Yeah. You yeah. see the same thing in the military when people first enter and then after they exit, you know, very, very rigid, have your have your socks folded the right way. Yeah. And as soon as they get out, they either maintain it and they're like, Yes, I like being organized and clean or Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the opposite mm-hmm. direction. That's uh, kind of funny. It reminds me of uh, the conversation I was with uh, Admiral McRaven last week. And he, you know, he's the famous guy who says, make your bed in yeah. the morning so that you accomplish yeah. the task. Right. We've all heard it. Um, but, you know, right before he spoke, there was a Green Beret that introduced him. He's like, and we're Green Berets and we don't make our fucking <laughs> at all. <laughs> and it's just so funny because... You you get some of those values. You either go with it or you don't, um, and that's a tough one too. Is it like with a twin? Because yeah. then you're like, I I have no idea how that yeah. happens, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So so you're kind of going through the fitness journey. Your dad's uh, instilling some good values in you, um, obviously, um, and you're kind of struggling with what you want to do next. <clears throat> yeah. So that was a hard thing was getting out of the military because yeah. I didn't have a plan. You know, Mm -hmm. I I will say like leadership getting out, you know, they were like, if you get out without a plan, you know, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And for a while there, I was like, man, these fuckers were right. You know what I mean? (laughs) But um, I had got some job offers. Then I had um, I moved in with my dad. And my stepmom at the time ended up committing suicide and uh, my dad at the time was like, hey, would you stay with me? So I ended up turning down some jobs to live with him. So I ended up picking up some jobs working security, you know, and I've been doing it ever since. Mm-hmm. And still like to this day trying to figure out what I'm doing. But yeah, there was a huge struggle there for a while. I, I can imagine. Say. I mean, that's that's a quite a large upset within the family environment. Yeah. I mean, so you, you you went back to obviously help your dad out, I imagine. Yeah, I helped him out as best as I could. I, yeah. I personally think he still needs to do work. He's a veteran too. He sure. was he was in for 22 years. He was a mm. he was a 68 whiskey medic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He I'm, was he was a medic for a while. I'm curious on, you know, as you're kind of transitioning and finding your own path and then getting a wrench kind of thrown into your life at that extreme of a level, you're still dealing with you know, a couple of losses in your, you know, in your career. Um, so how was, how was your mentality back then and kind of dealing with that? Was it, uh, because most of the time the defense, the defenses are up on that, right? Is if I go back to the family, I got to be strong for my dad. Like, what did that look like for you? I would say that, um, I had problems, uh, really just kind of emotionally, you know, I yeah. kind of bottled everything up and I wanted to be that strong guy around everybody that they could depend on, they can look Mm -hmm. up to and stuff. I mean, things like that. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I would say around that time too, I drank almost every single day. Mm. Sure. It was like, I would work out, drink and 
that was pretty much it. Go back to sleep. You yeah. Know, rinse and repeat that type of deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it, at least you felt like you earned the alcohol after because it worked. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, but you were way bigger yeah, back then, so, right? Like yeah, he was. I was really big into like, hey, I, I need to like eat big, lift big. Sure. Yeah. Be a big. Yeah. yeah. I was. I was huge. Like I was. I was like. 261 probably oh, like Jesus. i was massive yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm 200 yeah. now you know what i mean like that's six put it in perspective everybody he is five three yeah. <laughs> <laughs> five foot three wide yeah. half of my height is my hair yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that that's a tough one too um drinking consistent problem you know getting out of the military is just that coping mechanism we don't want to cope we still compartmentalize and we want to just mask it right yeah. stuff it down with brown yeah, for sure. Mm. That's what I was doing day in, day out. What did what did that look like? I mean, you obviously came to a point where you stopped doing that. And how long how long did it take for you to recognize that it was an issue or negatively affecting your life? Or did you have a wake up call? Or so like uh, part of security, I did. I did it for a bar for a long time, and mm. um, I would say probably around 2017, 2018, You know, I was in this really, I would say, really bad kind of like trying to find. A different career path yeah so i was like okay well i'll be a welder and i like spent all this money investing in a rig and all that stuff and it just kind of fell through i couldn't afford my bills had to sell my rig my truck um and then working at the bar i was just i was like i gotta do something else i was working at the bar looking at all these people just coming in from like let's say like noon or two whenever they open to close yeah you know and i was like Am I going to be this guy? Yeah. I see my future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, this is going to be me. Mm. So I think around that time, I just kind of, uh, started like kind of winding down, Mm. you know, at that point in time, I mean, went through like, uh, it was pretty rough around that time. So instead of, I think, I think there was a lot of other things there too. Like, uh, my emotions were pretty crazy too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had a a good friend at one point in time in my life. Um, He was actually there at the workout. He showed up. But uh, I remember sitting in my car like one night and I was like sobbing, bawling my eyes out. And I was like, this is it for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If he wouldn't have been there at that point in time and seen that, because he ended up just driving me to the beach. And uh, I mean, you know, from from here to Corpse, what, two and a half hours? Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You know, just to make sure I didn't do anything stupid. Mm. I would say you pretty much saved my life at that point in time. That's fantastic. Yeah. So you were struggling with suicidal ideation. I was, yeah. And your emotions at the time. Yeah. Were you you going through any sort of mental health care or treatment? I was. So when I first got out, I was, I uh, turned down a lot of medications that the VA had offered me. Yeah. um, Just because my dad. I see yeah. what he was on. He uh, was on a lot of these things. Sure. I, I feel like he was. I mean, uh, but he would tell me about these medications and stuff like that. And I just, I wanted nothing to do with it. Right. So I just either wanted like a holistic approach or I just wanted to go through, I just want to go through therapy. And yeah. I was going through therapy f- for a while there. Mm. And I would probably say like a, uh, almost a year. And then they ended up s- rotating out my therapist with somebody else and it just wasn't working at yeah. the time mm-hmm. um so i'd probably say that's when the spiral really started <laughs> sure yeah you know? 2010 was also the time where the va was just handing out pez candy, like candy dispensers yeah. it was it was the the amount of medication they were pushing us today i mean when i was in it was 2010 that when i was injured 76 pills three times a day like it was wild and it was all no 90% of it to counteract another drug that they're giving me. So, um, and, and then too, yeah, I could, I could walk in and just be like, I'm in pain and just whole bottle of Percocets, like a whole bottle. Yeah. Um, and it, it took quite a bit of conversations to break that down and be like, I don't want to be that, that guy in prescription medications for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you got to learn that, lesson vicariously through your father which is yeah so pretty huge i remember before i joined so he would take ambien to go to sleep Mm -hmm. um but he wouldn't even remember what happened because he didn't go straight to bed all the time yeah 
And I re- I remember this, this, this cracked me up, but he um, was downstairs and he had this huge, my dad's Puerto Rican, right? S- super loud, uh, has like all these conga drums and stuff like that downstairs. <laughs> but he just, he would play them like late at night. And I'm like, hey, I quit doing that. You're going to wake my stepmom. And he'd be like, no, she's not going to wake up. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. So one night he would, and she would wake up, you know, some sure. nights. I come home one night and at this time I was working some job and it was probably like midnight. And he's listening to like Mozart or something like that downstairs, loud, blasting it. And I'm like, hey, you got to turn that shit off. You know, he's like, no, nah, it's Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't wake up that yeah. night, but uh, yeah, but he wouldn't even, I would have to tell him, be like, hey, do you remember what, what happened last night? He's yeah. Like, no. You know, he would blame me for things that he did, you yeah. know, like that. Now I'm like, this was you. Yeah. Yeah, Ambien's a weird one. But there's a lot of weird side effects with that one. Yeah, yeah. I was on that one for ten years. Yeah, yeah. Ambien's mm. a is a crazy one. There, there's people that'll uh, like just walk into the water. Yeah. Drown themselves. Yeah. yeah. I, I believe it, man. That's that stuff is like it's it's no joke. Yeah. He he ended up branding himself one night. I wasn't there, but <sighs> someone had told me that he, he took like a a coin that he got. From the military, he thought it looked cool at the time when he was on Ambien and decided, hey, I'm going to brand myself. Yeah. He has a, like a... Before Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah, before <laughs> Yellowstone. But, you know, and he's he thought he was going to like like leave a nice little... Uh, it's probably just an ugly mess. <laughs> yeah. it, it's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, exactly what it is. All my coins I've ever got gone. are on my back yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Stack them up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a weird one. But uh, yeah, those medications—they have—they have horrendous side effects, and they can—they can exacerbate the symptoms, and you know, you know, it can—it can send you back down a, a very bad path very quickly. So it's good on you for for recognizing that early and not not just succumbing to it. Because a lot of guys just, well, you know, they know what they're talking about. There's a reason they're prescribing. Especially with booze involved, yeah. like real easy to pop some yeah. pills with some booze. Yeah, especially the the pain painkillers they used to hand out and Ambien in combination with alcohol, like horrendous decisions are made or you know just leads to death or, or yeah. straight up abuse continual abuse so that's good on you for recognizing that, that early and, and what year was this with uh so where you're living with your dad and uh, i would say this is 2014 okay 2014 and are you you're still just just knee deep in the fitness world you're traveling the world at the time right no no i didn't start traveling until like six six seven years ago oh, okay yeah yeah, I think I was engaged for the first time back then. It was just, you know. Uh, just kind of how life goes, too. Yeah, like very easy, steady. I had a fiancé. He, he was had a young son. pounds, man. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was quite small, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, yeah, and just, you know, working, taking care of my little family. Like, that was, mm. it was very, very uh, all-American, I think. Mm. Yet unfulfilled, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, and the more, <clears throat> when I had started dating my ex, um, he's a great guy. Like we had a, we had a healthy relationship, a healthy breakup. I have nothing bad to say about him, but um, he was the primary breadwinner mm. and I stayed home with his son a lot and worked part time and uh, it wasn't happy for me. So I really wanted to get more into um leveraging my degree at the time and working more full time. And it really started to create a lot of ripples in the relationship, right? Because then we couldn't all play our roles. Sure. He really enjoyed being the breadwinner. And up until that time, I had enjoyed being the, you know, part-time worker and mostly stay at home stepmom. And we had a great house and all the things. And so um, I think it was like a month before our wedding when I was just like, I think, I think we're doing this wrong. Like, I don't feel excited about this. Do you feel excited about this? And he was like, I don't think so. Like, I think, oh yeah, yeah he was like, a- I think you're right. Cause it was all easy. It was very easy. There was never <laughs> any, out. yeah, there was yeah. never any animosity. There was never yeah. any argument. It was just, it just was, yeah. you know, it wasn't yeah. bad. It wasn't great. It's very adult. Yeah. It was, it's very, yeah. Adult. It yeah. was very amicable. It was very amicable. Time. Yeah. We stayed friends for, for a really long time until, he, he got a girlfriend that didn't like him being friends with me, right? So, mm. which is fine. It's, it's the evolution and the way that life goes. Um, but yeah, as soon as, when I left him, um, 
that's when I went like balls to the wall in my career. And I was like, I'm climbing the corporate ladder. Yeah. Curious to yeah. see um, if that was more fulfilling to you. Probably not. Right. Um, if what was client it just, work, just as far as like when we have a tendency to immerse ourselves totally into something, put going all in like where it's not quite our passion. Sometimes yeah. we have a tendency to, to realize we're just masked. It, um, yeah, I mean, it, there was definitely, there was definitely a lot I was masking there and I'm not going to take away from that at all, but I think there was also a lot that I, I still do get out of it. Right. And mm -hmm. I have a much healthier work-life balance now, but it's because I've reached closer to the top of the ladder, sure. right? Yeah. Getting there, you make a lot of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I was thriving when I left that like there was, I remember waking up in my own condo and I was just sleeping on the floor, like literally just me in a blanket, right? I had no furniture yet. And it was my first time ever like having slept alone for, we were together for eight years. So it was like a very long relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just remember waking up the first morning and I was like, freedom. Like I, <laughs> but I didn't even Ooh. know that I missed it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, and, um, yeah, I lived a, a very healthy independent life hmm. for, for quite a while. But well, you said you were still feeling unfulfilled. Was that, were you still feeling that? Uh, uh, I don't think it was unfulfilled. I think there was a lot of stuff that had happened that I just wasn't consciously aware of the way that it impacted me. Okay. Um, and so, and so kind of avoiding some of those emotions, which I didn't even realize until much later in life. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And then okay. you met. No? <laughs> then I got engaged a second time. <laughs> 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 I can't help it if everybody wants to marry me. <laughs> oh, then <boy>. I, um, <laughs> I started boxing really competitively and, uh, I started hooking up with my coach and it was very casual. Yeah. <laughs> this is the truth. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, it doesn't make us uncomfortable. So I hope no, it, it doesn't okay. make us right. uncomfortable. We've, Maybe the two um, million viewers, but yeah. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about much worse things. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's not going to be. Yeah. yeah. And that was like, that was a really unhealthy relationship. Um, so he um, was, was, very, he was a professional fighter. He got injured. He lost his professional fighting career, mm. which led to a lot of substance abuse, alcohol abuse and stuff mm. like that. Um, and I, at the time, just for whatever reason, thought it was my personal mission to save him. Mm. Um, That's not for, for whatever reason either. I mean, that, that correlates very closely to, um, loss of purpose and loss of purpose is so we, we oftentimes blame it on post-traumatic stress in the military, but really what sense of purpose is what is the hook for it. So, um, he lost his sense of purpose and went on a spiral yes. and you naturally as any, any good family member or friend would do is try to reach that hand out and support them. Yeah. So it, it uh, ultimately became, when he proposed, right, I had kind of never really thought that far ahead. I always knew he was right now, not forever. Like I had never intended on um, being with him for the rest of my life. And when he proposed, I was like, fuck. <laughs> but but I couldn't say no. Like I felt compelled. Like, you know, first of all, there's people looking. So I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, all right, I'll tell him later. But then he posted it on Facebook. And then I was like, okay, well, now I can't tell him until there's like, a reasonable buffer period of time where I don't embarrass him. Right. And so I'll never forget like the first time I came into the office, uh, after he had proposed, you know, I had a ring on or whatever and everyone's like, Oh, let me see your ring. Cause he had tagged me on Facebook and I just started sobbing mm -hmm. like ugly crying. <laughs> <laughs> My boss was like, let me talk to you for a second. Are you okay? I'm like, I don't know what to do. I said, yes. And I don't want to get married. And, um, <laughs> I was traveling for work at this point in time. And so I was like very intentionally staying gone for as long as I could. And I'm like, I don't want a life where I don't want to go home. Like home is, you know, my sanctuary. And um, ultimately I, I came home one day and I was just like, I can't, I cannot continue going down this path. And there was a lot of other things that happened throughout the relationship that just, it wasn't redeemable, you know, like mm -hmm. we couldn't, um, 
it wasn't good for me anymore. So, so, but it was like one of the hardest when I think one person will want, so my previous engagement, we both wanted to separate, right? It was, so it was happy days. Mm -hmm. And in this instance, he did not want it and we, and we lived together. And so as someone who has a hard time, like hurting other people, it was really hard for me to be like, no, I want this. Like I'm, I'm standing firm in what I know is best for me, but ultimately we parted ways and then I was, I was just done for a while. Right. Yeah. And, but I, I left the country <laughs> for like three months <laughs> and that always cures everything. Right. I mean, for me, at least not for everybody, but travel for me is really therapeutic. Sure. Um, and then COVID happened. Mm. So then I came home and, um, all of a sudden I had a lot of shit to face. Right. And, um, I couldn't travel <laughs> because yeah. they shut down travel. And I was like, fuck, what do I do now? Um, but I, and I was living in Minneapolis at the time, which sucked. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's the cold weather and all of that to navigate. But I, I had just gotten back from Europe. We got informed the office was closing down for a couple of weeks. And I was like, I'm just going to drive home uh, and visit my family until they reopen the office. Cause I can, you know, I work primarily remotely, obviously being that I travel and I took my pets, thank God that I packed them in the car with me only because I had just paid a pet sitter while I was gone the whole time. I was like, I can't <clears throat> leave them alone again for that long. So I rented a car cause I had a gas guzzler and uh, we drove to Florida and I think the office stayed closed for over a year. Mm -hmm. So I just had my house, my empty house in Minneapolis while me and my pets were staying with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I worked from her house. And as soon as I got to Florida, man, I think I lost 10 pounds. I got a tan. I was <laughs> skating again, surfing again, like doing all the things that I that I didn't do while I was traveling for work. While I was living in Minnesota. I never got into snowboarding because I'm not a big snow person. Um, yeah, and then um, I like during all of this too, when like right before COVID happened, I had started working with veterans, counseling mm -hmm. veterans. Um, and ultimately that's what got me really connected into the veteran community. Mm -hmm. So I had started um, a business with a, with a former Green Beret. So we had an organization very similar to Until Death Collective dedicated to combating mental illnesses through physical activity. Um, so I was doing that you know, full time. Um, we had just done a mega fundraiser. So I was going to go surfing in California. <laughs> I was driving from Florida to California and I was pit stopping in San Antonio to do a little check presentation with Green Beret Foundation. And um, I threw up on my Instagram story. I was like, I'm in San Antonio. If I have any friends, <laughs> come out. Oh, and, yeah. Enter Sean. Yeah. Enter then I had a little Instagram Sean. follower come out and meet me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Slip my> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, at the time on my Instagram, I had like no pictures of myself or anything like that too. <laughs> so she had no idea what she was getting into. I wholeheartedly thought it was going to be a middle-aged chubby guy. I mean, <laughs> not throwing any shade at anybody, but I don't know a lot of guys that look like my husband that don't have a ton of pictures of themselves on their Instagram. Right. So I'm like, and it didn't bother me. Whatever. You want to come out and hang out with me, come hang out. That's, you know, what I did at the time was just try to show people a good time. And, um, yeah, I had been at the Riverwalk all day by myself. <laughs> and, like, they let you walk around and drink there, which they yeah. don't do a lot of places. <laughs> so I was, like, super annihilated. And, um, yeah, she's having a good time. She's having yeah. a great time. Yeah, uh, but it was also, like... Think and, of it this way. This guy walks in with his Fabio hair. Yeah. No, nah, you didn't have it at the time, did you? It was up to here. It was it was still yeah. longer. Oh, and no. it was pulled back too. I yeah. didn't realize you had long hair when I met you. Yeah. I remember. Damn, you should have just had it straightened and just flowing yeah. flowing locks. <laughs> yeah. Flowing locks. I get like the Connier look sometimes, you know, and yeah. I get a lot of wind. It's <laughs> 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 classic. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas Cage. Yeah, yeah. Nicholas Cage, Con Air. Yeah. Oh man, that that's fantastic. So before you dive into that a little bit, you you kind of paused at 2014. You're still going um with you know, dealing with your dad's going through some issues. Mm -hmm. You're definitely going through some issues. 
Um, how do you find your way? Because I don't want to dive into how you guys met when you're still struggling mm. because I know that yeah. you came back, you, you came out of that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm doing this, like I'm, I'm on the struggle bus from like, let's say 2014 to I would say 2019, you know, mm -hmm. um, I ended up kicking drinking around that time. Okay. Um, I got a different job. Uh, at this time I was also doing security, but I started, uh, working at a shooting range, just, uh, teaching safety and firearms fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Um, cake job, super easy. Um, but, uh, I think around that time I just started, um, uh, kind of getting out and cause I, I really didn't know what to do to fill my time, you know, after yeah. I kicked drinking, you know, so. I really started uh, hitting the outdoors. So I'd go to trails by myself all the time. Um, and I got into bouldering okay, there nice. for a while. Um, and it helped out. Um, started meeting some other people that were uh, kind of doing similar things. So um, I think really kicking the booze for me was... The catalyst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Once I kicked the booze, like it was like, I mean, I still had like a, a like I still wasn't opening up to anybody or anything like that. But sure. I def day and night, like difference, even even working at a bar still, you know, like mm -hmm. going in there. Like so I you kicked the booze before you were work, like you were still working at a bar. Yeah, that's got to be difficult. Yeah, yeah I, it was at times because, I mean, you worked at a bar before, like people just they just want to feed you drinks mm -hmm. all the time like yeah. shot for this shot for that and i remember one o'clock um we were allowed to like drink whatever we had in the hole you know what oh, i mean yeah. so like whatever somebody had bought you and before i kicked it i was drinking like people would buy me like uh like 24 ounce like booze like mug of beer and i wasn't like just sipping it i was like slamming them yeah mm -hmm. you know so I would, I'd probably slam like three or four, like no joke. And then by the time, like fast forward an hour, you know, I'm like, I'm wrecked. Yeah, of course. So, and just one day I was just like, man, like, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. So was it like a cold turkey thing? Yeah, was it was a cold turkey deal. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And at some point, at some point through all of this too, though, you had a kid you got divorced, like all of that was happening in the background too. Yeah. So, yeah. well, that's huge. Yeah. yeah I didn't there's mention like, my there's kid. a lot of big life right. changes he left out here. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a son, he's 12 years old. So I had him while I was in the military. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my previous wife were really kind of going through these things. She just, we just weren't meant for each other. Sure. You know what I mean? And, uh, I tried to make it work because I was like, oh, we have a kid, you know, we have to make it work, which. You guys are great co-parents though. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say. But at the time I was, I thought like I had to make it work because I, I feel like that's, that's what I was taught, you know, sure. like, oh, make it work for the kid. Yeah. R reality is sometimes different. Yeah. Much different. Yeah, yeah. And also like sometimes we're just not in the place in our lives mm -hmm. or we go into totally different directions. Once upon a time I was married as well and great human being. I was not in a great place and that that really just solidified the end, you know? Yeah. So so you're you're going through. I mean, literally is you, you thought you had a purpose since you were a kid. Like, I want to join the military. You get in there kind of disheartened by it. The leadership didn't really set you up for success. Um, so it's and then it's just bottle stuff it down with the alcohol. So like there there is so many different things that are going on that yeah. is a recipe for disaster, if you will. Yeah, it's a ton of things. Yeah. You know, and then going through that split like uh, with her, that took a while. You know, I was in the military at the time when we, we had split up. Um. But, um, and I had a, I mean, this was towards the time I was getting out, you know, um, but my platoon sergeant at the time, he was a, he was a good guy and he was, he understood, you know what I mean? He's like, you know, you're not alone. Like this happens. So, I mean, spending time out in the field sometimes I guess could be therapy, especially as G man, just driving around mm -hmm. mudding and trucks and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I was just going through a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So, but, but as we're coming out of that though, mm -hmm. you stop your drinking, you're still being able to be exposed to it, which in, in, in my opinion, it is more power in itself is like, you know, those people who go to AA for 20 years, I'm like, you are still an alcoholic because that consumes you and it controls you. You're able to be exposed in that environment. It's no issues to you. Well, I'm yeah. sure it was at first, but. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I do have like a, an addictive personality mm -hmm. when it comes to that type of stuff. I was on pain meds for, for a little bit, you know, but they were prescribed. Yeah. But, you know, it's like. From the army. Yeah. 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 Um, if, it's, if it's prescription, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. It's God. it's totally fine, right? It's totally yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah, I, I resonate with that that feeling. I'm, I'm the same way. I have very addictive personality, so I have to moderate. I have to make sure that I'm taking proper steps for myself so I don't go down a rabbit hole. Like, if I'm prescribed pain medication, I tell them, like, all right, I need five, no refills. <laughs> like, if <laughs> yeah. I take more than five, I'm going to want a sixth. You know, I'm going to want a seventh after mm -hmm. that. You know, I, I have to be cognizant with those things because, you know, you understand yourself, though. Yeah, understanding I, yourself is important. I right? told him I was like, I don't want any more pain medication. Yeah. Like, and I mean, unless I have to, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But mm. like, uh, I've been open. I was like, I don't, I got pretty addicted. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I was getting refills mm -hmm. after refills. And I, I remember my cold turkey, like we had a four day coming up and I was like, I need to kick this. Like, yeah. like this is hurting me. You know, at the time, like I was compete, I was doing a lot of jujitsu and stuff like that. And so I took a four day and went through, like, I remember getting in like my sleeping bag, put like sweats on, beanie on my head and stuff like that, and just covered up and got in there and sweat was hot out. and cold, you know, yeah, like sweated out. Yeah. Just going through these withdrawals. So the alcohol was kind of like, I was like, if I could do it with pain medication, I could, yeah. I could do it with that. Um, I still crave alcohol to this day. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, uh, it, it's a never ending battle at the end yeah. of the day. If you yeah. really think about it, but at least you could be exposed to it. Yeah. He, and objectively he, I've seen you drink once we're on Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. But he, uh, he had friends home from leave from Germany, from Germany. And, uh, it was Christmas and we were all out and, um, they drank, they peer pressured him into drinking, but he caves and, uh, you guys had a great time and, and you never drink again. So it wasn't like you went back down this really destructive no. path. Like you were able to enjoy it responsibly and not allow it yeah. to kind of like integrate back into your life. Yeah, I would, I would say so, but I, I just, I don't really have an interest anymore. I think picking it up at that point in time, trying it, you know what I mean? Like, I, it takes the power away from it, honestly. Um, you know, when, when you're curious about it for, you know, five, 10, 20 years, um, you, you, you give it that power, but moments like that is you, you give, you give yourself a victory point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And you're, and you're able to just cleanly walk up, walk away and do it. So it's like, I think that's great recognition that mm -hmm. you brought that up because it is, it's empowerment for yourself. Yeah. yeah. And he threw up all night long. <laughs> I'm sure that helped. Yeah. <laughs> that helped. Um, He's like, I yeah. don't miss this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he there. was like, babe, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least he's a happy drunk now, we know. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Next yeah. subject. No. <laughs> yeah, next <laughs> subject. Next I saw the face. Yeah. Um, so, so you're coming out. So you kick the, the pills. You kick the booze. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're getting outdoors. Being a firearm instructor, too, that helps. Like, that. that is such a huge therapeutic yeah. feeling. Very, very. Yeah. Just to get somebody that has never shot before. And to get them to shoot something yeah. accurately, you know, and, or just, just even like for me, like a small victory is like getting somebody like just not to be terrified of the firearm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, I remember having like one lady come in and she shot one round and she was like, I'm done. Like cried while I was like, it's okay. You know, like you don't have to come back. Mm -hmm. It's all right. But then she signed up for lessons and next thing you know, like she's working on concealment draws from like 
a fanny pack and nice. all sorts of yeah it was that's empowering yeah yeah for sure, for sure. yeah getting Just, to share that with people it's important mm-hmm. yeah you get the little baby birds under your wing you know, yeah right. <laughs> watch them grow <laughs> that's yeah. awesome that's mm-hmm. awesome so that and that um that kind of pulled you out of that and did it give you a kind of redefined purpose and direction yeah i would say it did um I, I still teach while I, I do security as well um, when I can. Just fundamentals for the most part. I don't think you can get enough of those and safety. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it, it gave me purpose, and I, I enjoy doing it. Mm-hmm. So um, this leads to you reacting to an ad on Facebook. Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. It's the same yeah. thing, Meta. <laughs> Meta. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't at the time. I don't remember. <laughs> no, it wasn't, for sure. Okay. You're right. You just corrected me and I got nervous. Um, <laughs> I have to win. <laughs> uh, last word. Um, so, yeah. So so how did that come about? We we know what she's doing during the time. Like, are you connected in the veteran community or are at you this, struggling? At this time, like, I'm just kind of doing my own thing. And I was following a few pages at the time. And the page that she was, she was helping out the Green Beret Foundation with, um, she was like, going to be in the San Antonio area around this time. And I was like, okay, well, if you need somebody to show you around, I can do that. You know, yeah. did you, did you see her face first? And, and you were just like <laughs> interested or was it totally innocent? Tons I, of selfies on my Instagram. Yeah, Come it, on, it was, you guys. <laughs> he saw my face. I did, but it, it was totally innocent at the time. I didn't expect anything to come of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, you're in San Antonio. I know San Antonio pretty well. If it was a big, burly green beret, <laughs> would you have reacted the same way? Is I the would. question. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. Yeah. Still would have married him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well. <laughs> well done. Uh. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I censored myself. You should not censor yourself. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it is 2024. Yeah. Teach teach yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Instagram uh, rolls along. You're like, I, I want to help this person out. I'm um, coming to San Antonio. And you guys connect. Yeah. At first, I didn't even know if I was going to make it because I was helping out... Um, with a company at the tactical games. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's like a two hour drive and I was like in the sun all day, oh, just yeah. baking. So I get back, she's been at the river walk all day. She's toasted, <laughs> you know, so I, I was in my own happy little world. <laughs> toasted. Right. So I get back and I'm like, I don't know. She's she messaged me. She's like, Oh, where do you want to go? I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll go meet up over here. So we ended up meeting up at a, a bar. And yeah, obviously she didn't know what I looked like, but it was the reaction was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I well, remember I, I remember it distinctly. I'm blind in my left eye. I was born that way. And he tapped on my left shoulder. And I thought it was a waiter bringing more wine. So I so I looked and I was like, <laughs> The chicken eye. Oh my god! Who are you? Yeah. He's like Ashley, and I'm like, "Fuck! I need a water." <laughs> so I thought I could get him to take some shots and like catch up, and you know, then we'd have a party. And he's like, "I don't drink." Nope. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> double fuck. I need, I'm gonna take a shot. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna shake, take both of them for yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. Um. I remember being like. So, I mean, it's in my nature anyways, but I remember wasting no time. I'm like, so tell me about your life. Like, what's your most traumatic event? And just jumped yeah. right in. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. She it was right like, okay. Too. Yeah. <laughs> just opened up like a book. Yeah, she just but I mean, opened up. It worked out, obviously. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. you guys talked, like, um, you got to talking about, you know, like, I, I'm curious, did it help kind of you? As well, I mean, kind of work through someone who's been exposed to that community. I think I'm going to let Sean answer this question, but I I do want to preface because I know he won't overshare and I will. He'll tread carefully and I won't. Let me say that he he it it almost I think was the end of us before we even began because there was a lot. I think a lot of questions I asked that he didn't even know how to answer, hmm. um, and the feedback that he ultimately gave me was he felt like he was in a therapy session a lot. (laughs) I was like, sorry, (laughs) (laughs) I'll work on it. I had growing to do. I didn't realize it, you know, at the time, but I mean, there's, 
I, I struggled there. Yeah. Well, I think it, I think, I don't think you had ever been in a place, correct me if I'm wrong, keep me honest, where, and I see this a lot, like having had worked with veterans up until this point where people ask you like, well, how does that make you feel? What are you feeling? Right. And I'm a very emotive person. If no one can tell, like you never have to guess what I'm feeling because I'll say it or you'll see it. And, um, I, I also like to know how other people are feeling, particularly my partner. Right. Mm -hmm. So he is a very stoic man. (laughs) He does not like, uh, emote a lot at all still. Like it, it just is in his nature. Right. But now at least he can articulate, Hey, this is how I'm feeling. This is where I'm at. I need it. I need a break. Right. But I think too, um, prior to our relationship, he had been in a, in a relationship that wasn't super great. And, um, I think there was a lot of like tiptoeing and he didn't want to say, Oh, I don't want to do that. Or I don't like that because there was a fear of a reaction because that's what he had Mm -hmm. always experienced. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm like the total opposite. I'm like, we don't have to do this. Like we could do something else. If you, he's like, no, no, this is fine. Right. So there's a, a, because of that, like trauma response, basically it's this constant state of doing shit you don't want to do because you're afraid of getting snapped at to say, I don't want to do it. And so we, we just went through a little bit of that and we, I, we kind of like decided like, Hey, I don't know if this is the best, if this is going to work. Like we're at, at two very different, um, places in our life. And then, uh, that lasted for like a day. And I was like, dude, I, I just feel like we have such a strong friendship and like you exhibit all of the, the morals and values that I really want in a partner. Right. Like he was, I was not in my best self when we met either. I was like going through this like really weird depression and I was crying a lot. I call, I remember calling Sean God probably like three times a day bawling my eyes out because to my point earlier, like I was just home and like I was dealing with a lot of things that traveling had allowed me not to deal with. Right. And, and my own organization was, painfully stressful at the time. And I didn't know how to navigate any of that. And I didn't want to lose what I had because I was scared of starting over and, you know, fucking George Floyd happened and I had a house in Minnesota and it was like property values just plummeted. I still had my car there. My neighborhood was like literally going up in flames and it was, I, I was an emotional wreck. Um, and never one single time did you say or make me feel like I was too emotional or crazy or too much. Right. He's like, Hey, it's going to be okay. Like you can call me later if you're still crying. And I would, <laughs> I was like, I'm still crying. Will you talk to me? <laughs> yes. I'm the crier. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah. kidding. No, it's, <laughs> it's fair. No, it's fair. Dude. <laughs> it's fair dude. But yeah, it was, he was, he was my best friend. He was my best friend. And so, uh, I think it just came down to like, Hey, I, I, me personally, like I'm willing to put in the work and meet you where you're at in terms of like respecting your boundaries, not asking as many questions, like not, not mixing at the time I was counseling, like not mixing counseling work with home. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's hard to do sometimes. Um, but in the same sentence, like it's going to require you to meet me halfway too. like, I can't be in a relationship where I have to pull things out of you. Like you need to come to me with how you're feeling. And he did. Yeah. Yeah. And you did for each other, which is the most important part is um, sometimes, sometimes it takes a good partner to pull you out. Um, Yeah. You know, and, and that's what it is too. At the end of the day. I mean, it seems to me like you've, you know, just outside looking in, you guys have built a wonderful life for yourselves. Um, so sometimes you just need to find that other person and the adversities that you go through, you know, are going to lead you to that. So, yeah. Yeah. And so after you guys did get together, I know that there's a couple other events that, that happened and progressed, right? You guys started until death. Um, yeah. Sean, I know you had, you had other, uh, traumatic struggles that you went through with your family during that time. Yes. I don't know if you want to touch on that, but um, yeah, we, we can. I for think sure. I think but it'd be very important. I think we started until death prior before 
that happened. And so first, first did, and foremost, yeah. the the mission, just like what who you guys are, what you do. Yeah. So and why you um, started it. yeah. So I had um, the best thing about my job is that they are painfully generous in paying for secondary education. So um, you know, for the last fourteen years. Uh, post college, I've been receiving certifications, you know, secondary degrees, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, that afforded me the opportunity to work with veterans counseling, um, which connected me to a Green Beret who at the time was founding a company. He had a lot of vision and passion. We talked about this, like the visionary versus the executor. Mm -hmm. Um, And he wasn't sure how to execute. And so uh, we partnered up formed a, a company, um, same mission as UDC, combating mental illness through physical activity. Um, and ultimately, tragically, it didn't um, work out. Our values at the end of the day didn't align and it, it required um, a separation to, to stay true to myself. So it was very traumatic for her to separate from that. Mm. Yeah. As well. She was stuck in a victim loop. First time you ever quit something or felt like you quit something? It was, okay, there was like so many factors. Mm -hmm. Like one being that while my partner wasn't aligned with my values, like I love him like a brother. I loved him like a brother. I probably still do love him like a brother. We don't have contact anymore. Um, But he was going through a lot of like what we've talked about, getting out of the military, substance abuse. Mm -hmm. It was like fueling a lot of wrong decisions and stuff like that. And um, again, <laughs> so it wasn't a romantic relationship, but it was a friendship and I'm trying to pull him out of it. Right. Yeah. Um, to the point where like I was getting like physically sick from yeah. it. And um, there were a few catalysts that I won't share on a podcast, but um, we parted ways and I was, I was in Europe for like what, six weeks. And he was with me. Yeah. Um, and I, I thought, I said to myself, like, I just need a break. Like, I need to recover. It was my first trip since COVID um, had ended. So it was a really, really important work trip for me. I was speaking at several conferences. So it was like a whole yeah. little a whole little circuit. And I felt like I needed to be really focused. But the amount of people that we had touched with our former organization, which was very successful, that reached out to me and was just like, I need you to keep going. Like we are behind you, whatever you need to, to, to do to like keep this mission moving forward. Like let us know. Mm. And I think I was in a hotel room in Cologne at the time. And uh, one girl in particular had reached out to me and and she's just like, please don't give up. Mm. And I was, I said something to him like, I'm doing this till death, man. Like I'm never giving up, you know? Yeah. And then I was like, till death. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Yeah. And I drew the logo on a, um, you know, a little hotel pad and I sent it to a graphic designer. I'm like, can you make this look cool? <laughs> and, and so we had like no downtime. And so we refined the mission a little bit. Um, still our primary goal is to combat mental illnesses through physical activity and we're really intentional on a few things. One, using the word collective and until death collective because no battle is one alone, right? And and I've seen it having had now two organizations in the veteran community. A lot of um, organizations kind of feel like there's not enough room at the table for everybody or we're going to cannibalize one another and all that stuff. And It's unfortunate. It is, yeah. It's gatekeeping. It's also yeah, not the true. gatekeeping. Yeah. It's not true. It's so, God, we're so powerful. We collaborate with the most amazing organizations, you know, like Alpha Warrior, Terra Armor, and we're going to do the Murph and Knuckle Dragger Society and all of these really, really cool people. And and so, um, you know, I think when we bring people with the same mission, with different missions, like anything that does good in the world together, Mm. um, together we go further. I say, I think that's my sign off on my email, right? Mm. Um, So, so physical, so the collective being a really key word for us because we didn't want to go it alone. Um, and then the second keyword being physical activity, right? Like not just working out, like not everybody is going to be comfortable in a gym. Not everybody wants to lift weights. That doesn't mean that you can't receive benefits from being physically active. So 
how do we get people active? We give them hobbies that keep them busy, that keep them moving, right? So we teach a lot of skateboarding, like that's my thing. So it's easy for me to easy for me to teach surfing, um, rock climbing, dirt biking, you know, range days is our third most popular mm-hmm. um activity on Until Death Collective. And and some and and that's not unique, right? There's a lot of organizations that do that, and that's really awesome. But I think our unique thing is integrating a heart rate monitor. So we use my zone heart rate monitors. Mm-hmm. And um, we give we get them in the hands of veterans and first responders, and essentially say, like, it's your job to connect to our um, community, which will help them do virtually via an app. And then um, we can see we can see on the app how active they're being, what they're doing, and we can provide encouragement, accountability. You have to wear it twenty four seven. No, <laughs> so it's it the, can get pretty competitive yeah. where you feel like you have to wear it 24-7. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know when I first got mine, it was like me and who was it? Uh, Dylan, Nikki. No, it was Nikki, right? Yeah. So I didn't have social media. I got rid of my social media for a little while. But Nikki. Who's, it, I'm going to give her a shout out because she's she's one of our athletes and she's really amazing. And you guys probably know her, Nikki Selby. Uh, her, girl. Yeah, her Instagram handle is Fly Girl. She has, she was a um I might have seen a nurse in the navy okay. retired yeah yeah but uh I um I had just a picture of like me as like a kid like 8 years old or something <laughs> like that on my MyZone profile and uh me and her were going like back to it literally can suck the fun out of working out but we were getting like 500 meps in a day yeah which so map being and uh, my zone effort point, right? Mm-hmm. So it awards the heart rate monitor awards you points based on your overall level of effort measured by your maximum heart rate. Our goal is is that our participants, our community, earn a minimum of fifteen hundred points. They get mm-hmm. entered into a raffle if they achieve that, and then we raffle off a cool prize at the end of every month. But we have psychos <laughs> who like, <laughs> but it's the great thing about the MyZone, right? And yeah. it, it's, you can take somebody who's like, oh, I'm not really that motivated to go work out, but then they're in this challenge yeah. and they're like, oh, Sean got a hundred maps, a hundred points mm-hmm. today. I should go get a hundred and ten. It's, it's kind of the, um, the group peer pressure mm-hmm. thing too. It's you competition. Know, yeah. It's a huge, huge portion of that. That's uh, it's wonderfully done, and as well as you should, as one of you know, as it's your organization. If you're not up top, <laughs> you're <doing laughs> wrong. Like when I first got the thing, like I was big into bouldering, mm-hmm. completely sucked the fun out of it. For yeah, me, because you're, you're <laughs> burning so much as well. Like, yeah, right? but I'm not like getting any maps right. So oh, I'm yeah, like, there's no heart rate going exactly up. Yeah. right. You're yeah. burning out. Yeah. I'm like ah. Oh. But just go skydiving. Yeah, the whole time you'll be <laughs> so we getting have, all those points. We have jumpers uh, and they, on I'm our sure team. They get yeah. quite a bit of points. Yeah, yeah. you can see <laughs> when they jump, and then when they pack their shoot up, you know. And there's so much gray, gray, meaning like you're basically at rest. But then when they jump, that that extra spike, yeah, right? And so it's really fun to yeah, analyze the data. I yeah. did that a couple yeah. times. I, I tried to monitor how my heart rate was doing, and. and Never think it went over a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Mine never exceeded eighty. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Ad Astra. Ad Astra Brad Pitt. Never exceeded eighty. Oh. <laughs> so you guys, so until death, it gets uh, just to continue progressing along with the story a little bit. So it gets founded. You guys mm. found until death. You got your Graphic design all done. Yeah, we got a logo. Yeah. yeah. So and you already had a community somewhat of a community to to begin with, right? Yeah, we had a we had a huge community, um, which which followed us, which was, you know, very yeah. mm-hmm. um heartwarming to say the least. Um and that was gosh, I think two thousand twenty two. Yeah. So about two years ago. Um and it's been it's been growing. So, so because we teach different types of sports and stuff, we have um, athletes that lead by example, mm-hmm. right? So, we've got a, ba- a brand new guy. He just retired from the military. His name's Andrew. He's a base jumper for us now. Um, we've got a guy. His name is Nick. He races in Baja quite often. He does the Baja. 500, the Baja 1000. Nice. And so, what we do is we we study the way that that people's heart rates impact their overall mental well-being, right? It's all multifaceted because of course we're 
help. We have a team of wellness experts as well. So we're helping people get their diets right, mm -hmm. get their mental wellness right. So a holistic approach, you know, nothing, nothing um, proprietary again or unique, but we, we focus very heavily on it. And um, we take the data that we can get from my zone and we send out surveys and say, Hey, like this is where you started on a scale of one to 10. Where was your mental health when you started wearing the my zone, right? Where is it now? What's been your biggest impact? What are you doing when you wear the my zone? How often do you wear it? So we're really starting to pull together a lot of powerful data in terms of like skateboarding impacts on average, your mental wellness like this, hmm. um, our, our top three biggest activities. We have about 400 people in our my zone community, right? So obviously the gym is the number one most popular activity. Hiking is the second most popular activity. And then the range is the third most popular. Okay. Um, and I think that really speaks uh, to the community that we have, right? A ton of veterans and, and first responders and they like doing that type of stuff at the range, but the maps that you can, the points that you can get there are are pretty substantial and maybe you don't realize it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when you're when you're practicing moving and shooting or like stress before shooting and, and all of those things and your heart rate spikes um, and then you, you know, once you leave for the day, you see like the way that your, your body has responded to the different levels of stress and then you have that feeling of relief and combined with community or partnership, however you um, facilitated your training day. Um, and it just allows us to be more imp impactful when we say, hey, we want to host this event with X, Y, Z, right? If, if our people like the range, let's give them a free range day, right? If they love hikes, let's go out and do a hike together. Um, not to say that we don't do other things, but if you're not used to surfing, getting someone on a skateboard or a surfboard is a little more intimidating than getting a group of people who already like to shoot and run and stuff yeah. together to shoot and run. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love the concept. Yeah. I think it's super, super good concept. Yeah. And I, I like, I like the trackable metrics as well. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Definitely helps. And it, it instills some competition. And also at the end of the day, you know, you are running a nonprofit. So everybody wants to see the numbers. We want to see the impact. Right. So if you have that data to show yeah. for it, it's like, look what we're doing. We're actually burning calories. Look at, mm -hmm. you know, is, is that something you do too, is combined calories? Yeah, we do. We track, mm -hmm. um, we track the total amount of, um, time spent being physically active, mm -hmm. um, the total amount of calories burned and then what the average heart rates were. Yeah. Um, so those are our three, on I your, think. I could just see on your annual impact report, you be yeah. like, this year we burned 400 million <laughs> yeah. calories. Exactly like that. It literally yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I love yeah. that. Cause we have ultra marathon runners in our several yeah. in our community, you know, yeah. and maybe you should have yeah. David, David Goggins this year. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> your, your points would be up. Yeah. yeah. Got some points there. Yeah. We have, um, Crazy. Tim Kennedy is part of our community and that's like a big, you know, selling point for guys cause they want to beat Tim every, wow. every month in the challenges. Um, but yeah, beautiful. it's, yeah, it's cool. beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and honestly, I think it, it speaks so much to what we've been doing, you know, yeah. within in, within the local community the past yeah. couple of months with our, our our challenges, your challenges. Yeah. I think there's a really strong local community within San Antonio that seems to be like standing back up. Yeah, we agreed. We've lost that for for a yeah. while, but it seems to be yeah, kind of and it's it's like so I I guess fortuitous like the timing because we just came to San Antonio yeah. permanently, you know. Um, and it's, it's exactly what we were looking for. Like, that's why we left Florida and came yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. Community. So, and it was like an instant, almost an instant plug in because we met um, Rustic Ranch through mm -hmm. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. They had us out. And then um, Sandy and Simon from Dirt Therapy Project were there. So, that's where we met them. And then they were like, oh, you got to come to the Terra Arma hike. And we're like, okay, sure, yeah. you know. And that really uh, plugged us into like, an awesome community. Now we're all going to live together someday. So yeah, that's, it. that's it. Don't give it away. Don't, Don't give it say away. anything. Sorry. Don't give it away. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> People are going to want to come now. Shit. No, no. My palms got sweaty. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> that's fabulous. Um, no, it's, it sounds to me like you guys have had um, quite the trials and tribulations, but it led you guys together to do um, so, like have an amazing in mission and impact yeah. on the community, which is, 
which is fantastic. And as, as Christian mentioned, I think, I think we are going through as a nation such difficult times, especially coming out of a wartime environment, Mm -hmm. that community is so important and, and just bringing like-minded individuals together, provide them not with just the resources and the programs that you do, but an outlet to share and find other like-minded individuals, just a hobby again. So quite incredible what you do. I'm really looking forward to the extended work that we're going to do together in the future. I know this is just chapter one, you know, of sure. our stuff, but, yeah. you know, combined chapters. Very exciting. The world. Yeah, very exciting, for sure. Fantastic. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Sean and Ash, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for opening Thanks. up, too. We really appreciate yeah. it, guys. Yeah, absolutely. And no one cried. <laughs> no one cried. <laughs> it's me. I yeah. didn't cry. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to camera angle four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll edit that out. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. This has been the Medivac Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening. If you're interested in learning more about Intel Death, you can go to the website. UntilDeathCollective.com. There it is. Or follow it on Instagram at Intel Death Collective. Correct. Get involved with the community, guys. Uh, even if you're not into fitness or outdoors, this is a new community you can get involved with. I'll provide some inspiration, some motivation, and uh, maybe teach you a thing or two. If you're looking for community, it's out there. Just reach out. We'll see you guys next week. Until next time. Bye.